from the last day here at our studio in Paris. And this morning we are talking security uh, with John and Emil on behalf of the OSGP and NES. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, Emil, I'm going to start with you. And I wanted to find out 2019, what have you seen in terms of perhaps a step change or a uh, a perception change from DSOs with regards to security? Well, I, it's been almost a year, I think it was May last year, that the GDPR was implemented. And that has certainly put a focus in the direction of security. Uh, and that has trickled down into uh, the security space of the smart grid. We have already seen a lot of efforts in the medium high voltage. And we're also seeing the GDPR programs trickle down into the low voltage grid. So that's the positive. Thing. However, GDPR has a very narrow focus in terms of protecting uh, private data. So it's only a small subset of we want, what we want out of uh, the security posture of DSOs. So they have certainly taken a step in terms of data protection, um, but there are some areas that um, we're still struggling a bit with. And outside of GDPR, I mean, is there... Uh, have there been any particular moves or trends that you've noticed within the DSOs? Outside of the GDPR? Yeah. Uh, there are certainly uh, a focus on security certification. Uh, the track this year had certification pretty much all the way down on the security track. So I think there is this focus on trying to establish a baseline of mm -hmm. security, which again is a positive, uh, but security certification will only get you so far. It's a point in time check, yeah. uh, and attackers don't play by the rules. They don't really care about standards and requirements. Um, so yes, a baseline is good, but again, uh, we need much more than compliance. They don't play by any rules, do they? <laughs> yeah. John? And I think we've, we've also seen quite a lot of our customers becoming a lot more aware of the, the, the infrastructure that they've deployed. When you deploy smart meter infrastructure, it's for 10, 15, 20 years, and the reality is, some of that infrastructure has been deployed out in the field uh, for a long time, prior to, to GDPR coming into effect, for example. So there's, there's a lot of initiatives now to actually look at that aging infrastructure and seeing, seeing how, to, how to apply security capabilities over the top of it, either through uh, upgrading the infrastructure itself uh, or actually applying, um, if you want, oversight from a security perspective on what's actually going on in the network. So, uh, speaking of the network, I mean, what are the forms of attack that could be leveraged against a utility and how can they defend themselves? Sure. So I think that it falls into four forms of attacks or at least concerns as a result of an attack on a utility. Uh, one of, obviously, is the data. Data is becoming much more important. They're used in algorithms and optimizations. And a lot of it is based on automation. So an attack could be to manipulate the data to change the eyes of the utility, the sensors from the smart meters, uh, the data collected from those smart meters are basically the smart grid's eyes. So you can change the algorithm inputs and thus disrupt. What they're seeing. Yeah, what they're seeing. Yeah, okay. it's basically changing uh, what they're seeing. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting attack on how you can from the edges of the grid impact more core business logic at the utility. Um, another form of attack is against the infrastructure itself. So um, a smart grid is essentially a computer network with software updates flowing out in the network, firmware updates, uh, push new functionality. And on the flip side of that, attackers can ex exploit this capability to hijack the infrastructure, to change the firmware to lock out the uh, to the to lock out the utility from their own infrastructure. Okay. And that could result in the utility having to replace infrastructure that they were not expecting to replace mm. um, so soon. I think it's 15 to 20 years, at least in the low voltage grid, uh, they expect this infrastructure to last, and then they can replace it. If they have to replace it after three years, the business case falls apart. Yeah. So there is a hardware attack and taking over infrastructure. Then we also have uh, ransomware attacks. Uh, I think there's a lot of focus on um, utilities and the energy in particular. And I think, again, the low voltage grid has some vulnerabilities that criminals and other financially motivated adversaries can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. 
Um, again, you can see how attackers could change keys on the smart meters to push out the utility from their own networks uh, and threaten them uh, in, in terms of you know, pay us and you can get your infrastructure back. And then finally, reputation. Uh, being in the news, uh, especially in these GDPR days, uh, not a good thing. Not a good thing. And uh, reputation means a lot for utilities. Um, and I think, even though you might not have a breach, just the fact that you get some bad publicity around security can be enough to really, uh, to really damage, uh, cause some damage. John, I have a question for you, and that is really. Emil mentioned that uh, a, a large number of these different types of attacks can take place on the perimeter of the grid. So if more than perimeter protection is needed, what can they do? Um, I, in fact, I'll pose that question to both of you. Well, I think uh, may, maybe I'll, I'll start off very quickly and talk about um, uh, detection response. So, so the, the assumption is always that, that a cyber criminal will be able to penetrate the perimeter. It may take time, but they're a very uh, ingenious, ingenious bunch of people and they are very highly motivated. Exactly. <laughs> so so the, the assumption is that there will be a, a, a penetration. And what we need to start doing is, is looking at how we put signaling in place so that the, the infrastructure itself is able to recognize that, that there has been a penetration uh, or, but not only the, an actual penetration, an awareness of the surrounding threat level. So maybe, maybe Emil, you, you, you take us a bit further. I mean, this is yeah, your, way, I mean, your wheelhouse. It, mm. Yeah, it, it, it is. So I, my background is actually uh, being asked by utility to hack into their smart grid. And I remember doing so without ever having the feeling of getting caught. And we need to change that because there was no monitoring. There was no uh, burglar alarm on the edges of the grid. And I think we need to do more in that direction uh, to be able to detect early uh, and reduce the impact of an attack. So this is, uh, this is the whole point about detecting and responding uh, to attacks. It's uh, early, and, early prevention, early detection. Yeah, you, you yeah. Uh, detect early and you reduce cost of the impact. I think we can do much in that direction. And, I, and what, what we'd like to do actually is, is, is expand beyond beyond the, even that which is already broadening the perspective so so the, the 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 smart grid especially in the low voltage network will actually be a heterogeneous network there'll be lots of different devices lots of vendors lots of standards yeah. and they will have different levels of perimeter security some will be rock solid some will be more permeable than others so actually having an oversight layer that's able to see see what's what's happening in terms of uh, a threat level or an attack or an intrusion that's that's actually really important because it provides a consolidated security awareness rather than a very fragmented view of, of what's happening well that actually brings me very nicely into my last question mm. and that is basically what is NES doing mm. to facilitate this increased level of awareness and protection yeah. So, so, so we look at it from from a couple of levels. You might you might think of the first level as being being the bread and butter. Okay. So that there there are things that, that that you have to do right. So you have to be able to deploy a smart grid infrastructure that is able to be uh, upgraded, reconfigured, uh, in order to be able to respond with with agility to the to the attacker. And what that means is being able to apply different configurations, being able to download new versions of uh, firmware to potentially hundreds of thousands of meters, millions of meters in a short time mm. to be able to respond to a new uh, threat that's actually starting to come in. And that, and that requires bread and butter, smart grid infrastructure, the ability to be able to communicate effectively to the meters, to be able to download uh, firmware configuration files quickly, reliably, and be able to manage that that process effectively, so that you end up with a a, a uniform deployment that actually has no no chinks, no gaps. Yes. And then and then that starts providing you with improved um, uh, encryption, improved perimeter, all of the perimeter capabilities. But then we start getting into into the the threats and the uh, and the attack. Yeah. Emil, yeah. any? Yeah. So we're uh, actually expanding our application portfolio to include detection tools to utilities. So uh, we sort of try to 
take uh, down the blindfold that they currently have in terms of what's happening in terms of attacks at the edges of the grid and providing some visibility into that and detection. So basically we're putting out smoke alarms at the edges of the grid uh, so they can detect smoke and put out the fire. I suppose it's about thinking like a hacker would think yes. exactly, and then yeah. putting up some barriers. Yeah, so we're very excited in delivering some tools in this direction to, to really help utilities detect attacks early. Well, I look forward to hearing what uh, what you come up with and, and how that proceeds uh, over the course of the next year. Thank you. Yes, we're excited as well. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. From our studio here in Paris, thanks for watching.